<laughs> so I know there's talks of going to the casino after this episode. What's everyone's favorite thing to do at the casino? Uh, I know for me, I like to go to the casino, make some motherfucking money. Yeah, yeah. 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 double it, double it. See, what about you? Uh, two things. One, free Pepsi. True. Ooh. That's true. I didn't it's think about that. Two, nickel slots. Hell nickel yeah. slots. I'm bringing only forty dollars. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> if it was me, I'd probably try to get out uh, while I still can. But honestly, uh, if you ever played New Vegas, I don't know if you have. They have a game called Caravan. I don't think they have it at any casino. But if they did, I'd fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, I really like the beer part. I like the part where you can drink beer and play craps. Yeah, like my favorite part of the night, you know. We're on beers with the you accidentally like walk away from everybody in your friend group, and next thing you know, you're by yourself and your phone's dead, and you're <laughs> slamming back PBRs and playing craps. But I mean, like honestly, like that's how life is supposed to be, and they, yeah. you know, people try and get you down about that, but I mean, like they're just haters, and yeah. haters gonna well, you hate. Know, you know what they say when life gives you PBR, you just shoot craps. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Someone I mean, gets it. I mean, they made me. A, they made me an adult man. I don't know what they want from me. I mean, it's like <laughs> sponsors, sponsors, Um, but all right. So I'll count us down. We'll crack these, and then uh, I'll do the little intro. Bring the four of you in. We'll just have a good time. It's been one, one of y'all. All right. In three, two, one. Welcome to the Beers of Bands podcast with your host, Michael Torres. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beers of Bands. Uh, this week, you know, I'm, I'm talking with uh, one of the hot new bands on on the on the scene, take the stage by storm. I'm sitting down with Red Sun. How are y'all doing? Great. Great. How are Good, you? Thank you. I'm doing great. You know, it's it's been a chill Saturday. I went and saw Dune. I didn't get a Dune bucket. They were all out, so I didn't get the Dune Issy. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm here having some beers with y'all, so that kind of makes up for it. Dune is so good. I, I said this before the, <laughs> the the cast, but I've seen it twice in theaters, and as of us like recording this, I think it's been out for a week. So <laughs> <laughs> that, That's dedication, because that's a three-hour-long movie uh, to do twice already. How many of those times were with your mom, Quinn? It once was with my mom, and I kid you not, Trace literally pulled up here, and I was talking about how good Dune is, and he's like, man, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm like, are we doing anything tomorrow? <laughs> are we doing anything? <laughs> we're doing nothing. I was going to say, because I saw the first one for the first time ever, like three or four days ago. She pulled it up at work on Hulu, and I was like, got to see what all the hype's about. And I, I enjoyed it. It was nice, and it yeah. kind of made me want to read the book. So we'll see. Yeah, I thought about watching the first one today, like leading up to it, and then I'm happy I didn't because I don't know if I would have been able to sit through like that much Dune. Uh, instead, I listened to this killer new EP that we're going to talk about here in a little bit, uh, oh, multiple so... multiple times. Uh, look at that tie-in. Look how I do that. Nice. Uh, that but for, pe- for people that might not know, uh, Red Sun, y'all are from uh, Norman, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Um, you know, uh, I kind of like the the tags online where. You consider yourselves fake emo, um, which, you know, I always love that. But it's it's at the root of it, probably a little bit more Midwest emo, pretty twinkly um, throughout. Um, but, you know, at the time it's recording, we're a day after the first single for the new EP dropped. Uh, and, you know, everyone is probably pretty new to Red Sun. You guys have only really been a band for not even six months almost six months um so i i guess i really want to get you know the full lore behind everything red sun so to really to start is kind of go around the room and say who you are and what you do in red sun okay so hi my name is quinn uh i sing and then i play guitar in red sun and i also run the twitter account very infamous and i uh I uh, help write the songs. I'm Trace. I play bass and I also sing a little bit. 
and I also was the producer for the EP. Uh, I'm Dylan. Uh, I play the drums. That's about it. <laughs> That's all I finance do. is everything finance related. I, I do. I do run the finances a little bit. Uh, I also run the Instagram and our uh, TikTok. But that's about it. I'm Zeke, and I just play guitar. But he's like really good at guitar, though. Like he's really good. You sing too. You do. Oh, he does. I, I do a little bit of singing. Songs. What are you doing? A little bit of humble as hell. <laughs> he's also a member of Go to Emo Band. Me too. Thanks. Plug this it. Is true. This is true. Uh, and you know, like I said, I think uh, I think the first show that I saw posted, at least if you base it off Instagram was uh, I always butcher the name to this fest, but it's the, it's the, the wizard spellcaster. Yeah. 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 I, you know what I'm talking spell about? exchange. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that was, that was really like the, the first glimpse of red sun uh, that people could see in person. And then that was right before, you know, the, the, the debut single part of it, of the, the three-way split with uh with the others like us and me too thanks um which is a a, a great sp- split for everyone listening go find it it's called uh lost friends found family um but you start off with that with with officer jenny um like I'm trying to think i had two que- two thoughts in my head and like they, they're kind of merging so i guess let's start with how did how did the four of you come together to become red sun and then how does that lead up to officer jenny Oh, this is a this is like a really long story. I guess, uh, Dylan, do you want to start with the first part? Yeah, I feel like you were there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, originally, uh, the band was actually just a three piece. It was uh, me and Quinn and uh, one of my best friends. Uh, his name's Caleb Campbell. Um, and we just shout so out Caleb. Quinn hit me up. He goes, "Hey, I'm trying to start a band. You want to play drums?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" It's like, "Okay, now I need a bassist." So I hit up uh, my best friend Caleb. Actually, loaded the bass uh, for us and um we started writing some songs together um eventually uh you know just with school and work and stuff he had to step away um so we hit up uh we hit up zeke uh from me too thanks and uh said hey you want to play guitar with us and so now he plays guitar for us uh that quinn yeah sure so uh, a couple things so like one with dylan and i we went to high school together and in high school we both played in bands but we didn't play in the same band it was like our school had like two like indie slash alt like emo bands and we just happened to be in the different ones and we played a couple like talent shows together but never made music until like you know graduating and being like adults and so it's like really crazy that you know we could look back after all this time and like dylan and i are still doing the music thing and together and it's super cool but uh so with zeke we uh, made a post on instagram or on twitter and instagram last may said hey you know we only have the three guys at the time we're looking for a guitar player if you want to play hit us up and we had one person hit us up out of everybody and it was zeke and like we were like really nervous because like me too thanks is like an emo band from okc they've been playing shows for years i mean they i saw them play with ben quad like a couple months earlier i was like oh shit, dude like we were like sweating bullets and he just shows up to rehearsal and zeke is like the most compassionate like sweet nice guy ever and i was just like really like oh wait yo this dude is like chill as hell like i was expecting him to come in and be like upset that we weren't like elite musicians or something <laughs> and it was just like really cool and so we started playing like that and uh our first show ever was last year in january so effectively we've only been like a band for like a year and uh, we've only really been like gigging for like about like 10 months and uh so we played a show in october and we're standing outside this venue uh which is like in a quality center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And our we're talking to our buddy Frank and we're like, hey, yo, should we hit up this Trace guy for mixing and mastering? Like we hear that he's a good guy. What do you know about Trace? And Frank is like, oh, Trace is like the best dude ever. No, but everybody loves Trace. And I was like, surely that can't be real. So we hit up Trace and as it would turn out, Trace is like the best guy ever. And it's like, we just like lucked into like the two kindest, nicest people ever. And so Trace produced, recorded everything for us. And we like recorded this EP, which actually we recorded before Officer Jenny. So there's some red sun lore for you. Wow. Uh, and yeah, we recorded it the week after Shadow Money Spell Exchange. I thought it was like I thought y'all came in. Did y'all record the day after I left? Was that when that was? Or was we re- that just for? We recorded the 17th or the 18th with you, I think. I don't know when we recorded Jenny, but I think it was the week after that. Okay. I thought y'all said you were recording the day. Yeah, after because like. For Alistair. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, we recorded with Alistair, who is also a Me Too Thanks with Zeke and for Officer Jenny. But um, anyways, so like Trace recorded us. And so we booked this like release show, which at this point, this comes out has already happened with Stars Hollow. And uh, we're pretty stoked. And so I like hit up Trace. I'm like, yo, dude, you any bands? Like, do you have a band? Do you want to get on the bill? I'm like trying to get, you know, Trace on this bill. And he's like, uh no actually i'd love to play bass though like i think i'd be a great fit and i was like hell hell yeah i mean i think you'd be a great fit too we, every, I, everybody literally loves trace and literally that is like best thing has ever happened to us like i feel like since trace has been in the band it's just been kind of like this like complete like family where like we really do well together and i mean like it's been history ever since then we did the uh the split and then we did a run in january and that brings us to like current day red sun where we're doing the ep and we're on thumbs up records and stuff which is crazy <laughs> uh that's yeah it's amazing how like how much has happened just since december um because you know obviously i had brady on and we were talking about stuff and you know as as things normally happen when when we get done with like recording an episode i kind of like kind of just shoot the shit and talk about like who's possibly going to be added like i find out some like details and shit like that um i don't think he mentioned red sun at all so when i saw that that drop and you y'all got announced to be on the the label i was like oh shit like oh hell yeah like that's sick um because it, it threw me for a surprise where i didn't even see it coming yeah i think it was kind of like a newer thing so i guess we can this would be like a good segue to maybe do the story about us being on thumbs up and Sorry. So obviously the first step would be that Ben Quad was on Thumbs Up Records originally, and they took our yeah. friends, the others like us, on a run with Forrest last spring. And that's how Brady met that band. And they kind of like, you know, you know, met. And so later uh, last year, I believe it was like September, uh, the others like us signed to Thumbs Up Records. And um, I just remember like one night, like maybe in October like getting added to a call and it's like Brady and, you know, like all these people. And like, we just start talking. It's like, you talk with Brady and it's like within minutes you realize that they are just like super nice, super cool guy. They like, we, we were just like, our humors were just like really, really close. I mean, like it just felt like we were like instantly like friends, like we'd known each other for a long time. And so I, I, I personally call Brady at least once or two times a week and we just talk and like shoot the shit. Like I hear about like, you know, maybe who they're seeing or like how their job's going or whatever. It's like, we're like actually friends and it's super cool. And uh, like we recorded the EP in November. And so like I started like sliding some stuff their way because, you know, we're like a big fanboys of like all the bands on there. Like, I mean, Zeke's in the Awa hoodie. Like, like we love so many of the bands on Thumbs Up Records. And so I was like, hey, you know, these are our songs. Like, you should check it out. And, uh, you know, they were like, oh, OK, you know, like I'll look at it. And I was like, man, we're nobody's I was like, I didn't really know that think of you know, people thinking about it because like i listen to our songs and i hear my voice i'm like oh, i can't listen to this i it's like <laughs> but i guess they liked it and they, you know they they asked for us to you know be on the label and like immediately our first reaction was like yep 100 yep <laughs> and so i mean like yeah, i guess it was just like knowing the right people and i'm glad that people have been so like overwhelmingly positive about us so far like you know especially because we had like one song out like uh to have a second one out and people like universally i feel like people have just been like so kind that's just like, crazy yeah like literally just scrolling through twitter is just emway and then red sun like just retweets and everything talking about the two singles that came out since they came out on the same day and it's just it's great to see and you're you're now included in such a great roster where i love i love the entire thumbs up roster and what brady's kind of cultivated over there um and i'm also loving that like I, i'm interested to see how many more of uh like these oklahoma bands kind of come through and and maybe get added to and just see watch like watch the label turn into like a wisconsin oklahoma uh like just factory basically o oklahoma is actually like really popping off for like we have an emo band for like every emo niche. We have at least one, and they all rock. It's like peak, um, and it's like really strange for a scene to just be all friends with each other. But I feel like Oklahoma is just like so kind, and we're all we're all really like homies at gigs and stuff. It just feels like hanging out. I mean, I, well, um, to bounce off of that, like I've had 
obviously Limp Wizards, I've had them on. I've had the others like us. I've had Ben Quad on, all from Oklahoma. And it's nice to, and everyone said the, the kind of the same thing that you said, Zeke, where the, the scene is just so like integrated and so cool with each other. Um, and it, you love to, to hear that. And um, I'm just like super stoked at how well, like, because most people in the country, they're like, it's Oklahoma. There's got to be like nothing there besides like the OKC Thunder or maybe mm-hmm. something else. Um, but obviously there's y'all, uh, everyone else I just listed, plus like Cliff Diver um, and a bunch of other bands that I probably would butcher or completely forget who they are. But they're, they're, it's such a nice like little hotbed that people just forget about. I uh, want to segue off that for a second. I just want to say something so it's like documented. The dudes in Ben Quad are legendary humans and we are so lucky as a community to have them. And I'm so glad you got to talk with them. And I, I just want you to know that even in their blow up to this point where they're at and they're doing this huge like US tours with Hot Mulligan selling out 3,000 cap rooms, I see these guys at shows in OKC that have 20 people, have multiple members of the band. They're just there having fun, hanging out. They're seeing the local bands. They take like a lot of pride in like the local scene going to see shows going to see new bands like just being there and being present for touring bands and i i that means a lot especially to us and i'm sure it means a lot to you know a touring band if ben quad is coming out to your show and you know it like oklahoma is not exactly like a crazy emo scene so you know like just seeing them front row and i mean these guys like literally are the most dedicated people to the scene ben quad deserves all their success we are nothing but ben quad lovers yeah and i think yeah i think they really set an example too like it's like they were the I don't know. I like the scene has always been good, but it went through like a dead period. And I feel like Ben Quad has really like set an example and now it's like popping off and it's hot. So Yeah. When Quinn was saying like they pulled up to like shows with like twenty people, Henry and Sam pulled up to a show we had with like about like thirty, forty people. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to come out on a fucking what was it like a Friday? Yeah, it was like a Thursday, yeah. Oh, it was Thursday, a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they didn't have to do that, but they did. And I think that just speaks volumes to like how good of people all of them are, like Isaac and Edgar included. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I got I was lucky enough to uh so when they were on uh not to do a, a complete like fanboy Ben Quad episode, but like I had them on right before right around when the EP f- first came out, and then I got to see them when they came through Minneapolis on that hot mulligan tour. And it was just so nice to like see them and like actually meet them in person and just just like kind of reiterate what y'all are saying. We're like they're just the most nice, humble people, um, and that's why like I think everyone in the scene is so behind like them getting like these offers and kind of getting this push because like it hasn't gone to their heads. They're still like the same genuine people that'll like take time to like talk to you and just like have a decent conversation. Yeah. Um, so like, much love to all the Ben Quad dudes. Yeah, that's how I found out about you, actually, was that episode you had with them. Oh, hell yeah. I listened to it, and I was like, oh, this guy's cool. And then I listened to, like, all the, like, the the bands I recorded afterwards, like, all their episodes and a few episodes here and there. Yeah, I really love what you do, honestly. Dude, I appreciate yeah. that. We we all of it. And the last Ben Quad thing that I want to sneak in here, because I feel like we should talk about ourselves, <laughs> is do you know about Trace's history with Ben Quad? I, I don't think I do. Trace, why don't you tell them what songs you produced for Ben Quad? I'm no loon in a tech you can't deck out. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, Trace just over here casually producing <laughs> songs with hundreds of thousands of plays, and he's in our band, and just like he's our guy, you know? Obviously, I love those guys, <laughs> and it's not that I'm not proud of it, but I feel like they kind of blew up after that, and I don't want to... I don't want it to seem I like I'm like riding the coattails. <laughs> nah, dude. Success. People, I people... love those guys. <laughs> but you know, no, yeah, I I did do those two songs though. I for He's me, so it was kind of like a, a fanboy thing too. It was like I think 2018, and I had seen them at this venue called Orange House, and I think it was basically just Edgar's old house. But it was like right off of the Oklahoma State campus, and they would just have house shows there like every month, and so. I had gotten taken to one of those and I love what they did. And I never really experienced like the DIY or emo scene. Like I was really into like post hardcore and metal, but yeah, I really liked their music. I saw they didn't have like too much out. They did the split with my heart and liver. And so I was like, I know RIP. And uh, I was like, Hey, I kind of produce. You don't want to record with me. And so they did, uh, they did, 
they actually did Jim Carrey with them too. I forgot about that. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah, they did Jim Carrey off that split, and then they did the other two songs off the Sweet Peach split. And yeah, no, it was it was a it was a fun time. I learned a lot, and yeah, I mean, I feel like I get to have uh, you know really great friends out of it too, which is like the best part of all of this. I was just thinking that's the best part about this is just having a really like yeah great group of friends, and it's an excuse to hang out. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. I was yeah, actually I mean, talking to Sam from Tolu about that. He was like, I didn't know if we were just like business associates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm glad we're friends, though. I was like, yeah, I am too. I- I'm glad we're friends. <laughs> yeah, that's always got to be kind of awkward. I-, I know, like, I have, like, the same kind of, like, thing with this where... And it, it's always weird to me whether like how it plays out because in my mind, I sat down with I sit down with people for like an hour and a half and I'm like, oh no, now we're like ho-, like I consider everyone that comes on like homies if I've sat down for over an hour and talked, and then I feel like oh. I like reach out and then it's just it's also I get in my head but not to put shame on anyone I'm just saying like no no hit me up sometimes guys but yeah. uh. And- yeah. No, literally, like any anytime, hit us up. <laughs> like we are, I swear we're game. We don't do shit. Yeah, we're pretty lame. <laughs> I'm not, not a very, band. Not yeah, very... if you're trying to run some games or something. I was gonna say I'm not very good at Fortnite, but I will, <laughs> I will sacrifice myself and update on my Epic Games launcher. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get this work in Tekken? I don't know if you play Tekken. Yeah, you know what that that Tekken work. <laughs> yeah, I can learn. We can figure it out. But, oh, okay, uh, let's go. But but yeah, we'll talk about that later. We're here to talk about this killer new EP that recently just dropped. Uh, time is a construct, so don't worry about right now. But, uh, you know, it's it's called, I think I have the name right, based off the files, but it's called Best Buds, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, for people listening, I'm not dumb. It's just that we're recording before the, the EP came out and we're talking about it now. It's crazy. It's weird. Time, like I said, is a construct. But... Uh, you know, everyone knows, I thought about this all day as to how I want to lead into the CP and everyone knows the album from, from, uh, from mom jeans, best buds. And I got to say, I've never heard of it. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Just, just, just just throw it out the window because this is now the (laughs) best album called best buds. Uh, like this album in my mind. And I said this before we started recording, um, like once it was sent over to me, I've literally spent the last like three days just going through it. Like if there was a ma- like if you could see the amount of streams that this EP had already just from me, it'd be at least at least three digits. Um, it's oh God, like so this nice, EP man. is so fucking good. I can't stress that enough. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. That's very sweet. Thanks. <laughs> hey. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I, I guess maybe talk about like the mom jeans like whole thing with that. Uh, so for me, and I'm sure Dylan as well, because we played mom jeans covers back in like high school. But oh, like yeah. we're probably one of the first emo bands where it's like a lot of our members grew up on counterintuitive records. Like we like I uh, so we're but we're both 2003 babies. So I mean like I'm 21 years old and I was born in 2003, and it's like when I was 14, like uh the prince daddy uh mom jeans oh so oh so all that stuff was coming out and so like that was like what was my new and hip bands and i just remember like hearing that stuff and just being blown away like e- even like uh like you bring remo drive into that it's just like that whole counterintuitive record slash like maybe like what people consider a weed mo like that mm. was like my music and i think with dylan too like that was kind of kind of like what like got us really we were like holy shit like this is cool like I remember, you go on YouTube and you know, you search a live set for Mom Jeans or something. It's like you see these dudes that you know you think are just like normal guys, and they're playing like the hundreds of people. Everybody knows all the words. The songs are catchy. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like I want to do this. Like I want to make this. And it's like, I just remember, like for all the time I was in high school, we were covering Mom Jeans, and like it's just a band that means a lot to me, and I think it means a lot to Dylan and Zeke. Yeah, me too. And I think, I think it's funny because like I'm a little bit older than me and Trace are a little bit older um, than Quinn and Dylan, and I remember like pri- primarily the Mom Jeans hate period, where <laughs> everyone said they fucking suck. 
Uh, but I'm like, I think everyone's kind of coming around, and I think the general consensus is they rock. Um, and who cares if it's kind of cringe? Like, I think uh, it's fun music, and I think a lot of people discount how important that is, especially in DIY. Like, fun music is like the best part about it. Oh yeah, like the amount of times that I've, within the last year, put on Best Buds, just in an everyday setting. Um, Because I'm also one of those guys that uh, as much as I do this podcast and I sit down with people that are always putting out new music, I'm also one of those guys that listens to like the same five to six like EPs or albums all the fucking time. The The ones that I always have on loop is either, you know, Mom Jeans. I have some Modern Baseball in there. Uh, Free Throws early EPs are always on there. Um, Like, (laughs) like, literally my top artist for the last two years has been Free Throw and it's been mainly just... Uh, the early EPs. Every that is so time. fucking based. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So don't come at me, but it's also free throw. So you, uh, you can't hate on it. Um, no, but it... yeah. So to, to kind of do best buds as like an homage to that album and like the time that you went through it and like, you know, that's, that's your roots at the end of the day. And it's awesome that you like did that. Yeah, uh, so I, I, obviously all this is being recorded before like we even announce what the title is. So I, yeah. I think we're doing that in a couple of days, and uh, I hope people take it well. But like, I, I I want people to know it's it's like as much as it's kind of like a oh ha 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 it's named best buds. It's also like yeah, it's like it's this is best buds. Like I think one way we always have described our sound is like I feel like we try to be kind of like a fifth wave emo interpolation of mom jeans in some kind of capacity like uh dylan like would you kind of agree with that oh absolutely 100 yeah. percent. i yeah. think when for like mix comparison i think you sent puppy love or something to trace um yes so i didn't really grow up on like a lot of the same bands uh like zeke said like we're a little bit older but i deviated to more like pop punk like fallout boy stuff growing up Right. Um. So I didn't really, I didn't get into like this kind of like wave based emo up until I started recording bands like Tolu in like late twenty two. Mm-hmm. And so he was like sending me like you said like reference stuff, and uh, I was just trying to reference the mix. And then I was coming up. I also did like a lot of the art for uh like the singles and the album and everything. And I I really still don't know if you sent me that. I think I must have sent you Puppy Love because this is a little leak. Uh, Brady sent our EP to Jake from Counterintuitive Records today. And Jake was immediately like, oh, it's named Best Buds. Ha ha ha. And they're like, wait, this is just the Puppy Love album art. And <laughs> I don't, I did not remember that going into making the art. All I knew is that there's a Polaroid, the, obviously the Polaroid on the album art of us is, or did I send you that? No, I haven't, I haven't seen the cover art at, the, oh, okay, at this yeah, time. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll I'll send it to you. Okay, keep talking, Trace. But anyways, it's basically like a Polaroid of us on New Year's, uh, plastered out of our minds, minus (laughs) me. And it's just a really great photo. And originally, I just had the photo of that that I took on my phone and Best Buds, like, over it. And I was like, you know what would be so fucking cool and original? is if I took that and made it look like it was in a scrapbook and then I put like some fake tape like overlaid like at the top and bottom of the photo and I sent it to him and I think you said it looked like puppy love and I was like what is that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no, I I did not mean to do that but that's how it ended up and I mean I'm stoked on it and they're stoked on it so yeah I'm pretty stoked on it I think yeah. it's cool yeah. it's, it's kind of funny that you just like had that idea and then it just came out the same way um, i'm sure i saw it somewhere like subliminally the, it's just in the back of your yeah, mind yeah the idea that mom jeans is popular is not lost on me like i had heard the first introduction i had to them was uh sweet tooth and i think i might have heard like their previous stuff because i think ben quad might have referenced some of that when i recorded them but I mean, Sweet Tooth was like the first album by them that I listened like front to back, and that was like my introduction. So I didn't really understand it, I guess, beforehand. But yeah, I do want to say, uh, you know, Best Buds is definitely a homage to uh, Mom Jeans. 
But at the end of the day, uh, it just really speaks about, you know, who we are as a band. Uh, you know, I've known Quinn since high school. I haven't known Zeke and Trace for that long or for as long. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're not just, oh, you know, we played a band together. We really are just a very tight knit group of friends. I mean, we're texting each other in the group chat every day. We hang out all the time. Uh, you know, going and playing shows and rehearsing together. Like, uh, I don't know, Zeke or Trey said it earlier. It's an excuse to hang out. You know, I love seeing these guys every day or, you know, whenever we get together. Uh, we really are best buds at the end of the day. I agree completely. Please stream this so that way I can hang out with my friends all the time and <laughs> instead of having to work. <laughs> so we can quit this dumbass band. Yeah, so we can quit this dumbass band. quit this dumbass band. Get a condo. <laughs> Oh, re- landlord era is a classic. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. 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 No, but that's 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 what you want at the end of the day is you don't want to just like have a band and make it feel like work. You want to hang out with your best friends. Like that's the shit I've, I miss about like my friends having a band because I when I used to TM for them, when we go on tour, it's just me in the van with like my best friends just fucking around having a great time. That's and a vacation. Then, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you got to put in a little work. And the drives suck, but it's still a vacation no matter no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. That's how our uh, tour in January felt, at least to me anyway. It was just yeah, yeah, like, always, nothing yeah. went wrong for the most part. Like it was that was my first tour experience. I think it was except for Zeke, that was like all our first tour experience. Oh, no, actually it was mine too. I, it was okay. everyone but Tolu, because Tolu had been yeah. with Ben Quad before. And like I feel like Tolu, whether they know it or not, kinda like took us under their wing for that whole entire thing and made it a ton easier. Like it has yeah, it's absolutely been a collaborative yeah effort. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like everyone was on the same page for like most everything. Some people were driving back to like Oklahoma before shows and like everything was coordinated really well. Like I, I couldn't have asked for a better experience for my first tour. I don't know about y'all, but yeah, no, it was great. Same here for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, but jumping back into the CP uh, for people that might not have checked it out yet, one, please go do that because it is I can't stress this enough, amazing. Uh, but it is a five song EP. Um, you know, it's it's definitely one that I think one reason that I listened to it so much is because I I I wanted it to be a full length so bad. I want to see what what y'all can do with like more than five. Uh, not to say that these five are bad in any means because they are you hook us so well in the beginning uh with life sucks and it just it's just this fun like bouncy like uh twinkly just ride throughout the entire ep and like listening to it and then like hearing the lyrics more and more like understanding them more and more like it's just so like i i like i could probably sing along to the entire thing like if we were doing the show right now like i'd be in the front my old ass would be in the front trying to finger point and knock it like hit by everyone behind me. Uh, but I'm old, so I stay towards the back because I have a bad back. I don't know. Uh, knees are bad. But, uh, you know, it's it's solid. Um, I know I know. Red Sun is the first, first single, and I think uh, Life Sucks is the second single uh, that came out. I... It'll be Faker, I believe. Oh, Faker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't Faker remember exactly how you... One which order you sent it to me in but uh oh my phone um but yeah i think like obviously like you said faker was the second uh single and that was faker is probably my favorite song off the entire ep um but everything just has such catchy lyrics that you just can't help but like vibe out and like feel them and like sing along to it right after, right away that's all young man right here. Yeah, that's, that's little boy right that's there. All uh, thanks. I uh, Thank you. That, that means a lot. I uh, I will say, I we were talking about this. You know, obviously, I want to hype it up. Uh, this is like our first, you know, kind of like thing doing anything. Like, I wrote a lot of these songs when I was 20, you know. And uh, so, I mean, like, I tried to like kind of like, this is kind of like a period piece, I think. And I feel like a lot of people can maybe relate to that where it's like, you know, you're in your early 20s and, you know, it's like your life, you know, you're not really worried about maybe uh you know planning for retirement or having a family or you know like you know other things that come with aging you're kind of living in the moment and regretting the things that you're doing as you're doing them and it's not in a way where it's like man i'm ashamed that i did this it's like in a way where it's like maybe this is who i am 
and you know you're kind of like sorting through that out and so i think i really tried to like kind of encapsulate that feeling on a lot of these songs and so i hope when people listen to them they just don't think oh man you know red sun makes songs that sing about like drinking or you know hating the way you act i, I hope you listen to it and you're like you know once in my life i kind of felt like that or maybe you feel like that now and uh, i just hope that it's like something that you're able to relate to on a personal level and uh you know like i try to like also make it catchy at the same time so i mean if you think it's catchy too i i'm really glad that you think that as well i mean uh, that was kind of our goal <laughs> uh, i think something that me and clint have talked about and, and dylan as well before is like the there's really something to like a good hook and a very simple easy to learn song like you said, you would sing along to it. I feel like it doesn't take that many listens to to figure out the words and and sing yeah. along. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. Like it, it's 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 catchy enough where and simple enough where you can sing, sing along to it right away. And then Quinn to kind of bounce off your other point. Like I I'm thirty one. I'm I'm ten years older than you are. And a lot of these songs, especially, I think the reason I like Faker so much is because just the the content of like. I keep getting drunk and like saying all these things and like what's the outcome and like going through all that um it it resonates like not that i've done shitty things in my life it's just more like i spent a lot of uh, a certain point in my life like just i was the guy that would get drunk at parties and just like overdo it and it just brought me back to those times um so i i like i related to it hard and then i also just it's catchy as fuck so like you can talk about your feelings while also being catchy. So it, like singing along to catchy shit. So it works out. Yeah. I'm glad you related to it. And like, one thing I'd like to say about that song is it's like, um, I lost my train. I thought I'm there a little bit. Cause I, I thought about two things, but it's like one, I wrote that main riff, like, uh, w with the chords without the twinkling when I was like 17, like that was like one of the first riffs I wrote on guitar. And it sounds kind of weird. Like when you listen to it, you're like kind of puzzled. It's like, how am I playing that kind of thing? And it's because like, you know, when you start guitar, it's like, you don't really know what you're doing. And you kind of like start just, you doing whatever. And that's kind of what I did. But another thing about that song is it's just you know not just about like you know drinking and like you know saying stuff that you maybe don't mean or like that you're gonna regret but it's like i feel like being that guy where it's like you know you're at a party and you get drunk it's like feels almost shameful because it's like people like know you're that guy it's like i don't want people to like you know think of me and myself as my character it's just this guy who i say things that i don't mean even though i have like this this great character as a person the majority of the time and um or like you kind of want to like get across that feeling where it's like you know sometimes like you know you have this like introspective moment where it's like you know you're having all this fun but it's like at the end of the day is it really all that fun you know i mean it's like if people only see you as a drunk person then they'll ever only ever know you as a drunk you know yeah or then you start a podcast where you just keep drinking but uh that's <laughs> that's besides the point uh yeah no 100 percent um and I was trying to think of what other song to, um, I mean, kind of not to overhype Faker because, like I said, it's probably my favorite on the CD. It. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't worry. Um, but, like, going back to everyone's point about, like, you know, the, the catchy lyrics and, like, making them kind of, like, simple and where you can listen to it a handful of times and already get it. Like, Saucy is the other one, too, where, like, the hooks and like the choruses like really get you to keep going with it. Um, not to say that every th the other three um, like uh, Red Sun Po and and uh, Ball and CC and Life Sucks don't have those moments, but everything just like flows so well too. Like also the entire like I feel like layout like choosing of the order of these five songs worked very well to kind of guide us through the entire EP. One thing about, I'll send you a link for this too, because I just put it up in sampling, but Life Sucks and Saucy actually are seamless. I don't know if you noticed. I, I could tell. So like the way okay. I listen <laughs> yeah. to it, I just, I downloaded the files just so it's easier for me, but okay, cool. I, I could, I could definitely tell. And especially if I remember that like Life Sucks was almost done and I would hit like the next button to like go to the next song. I could, f I could see right. where it's at. So I'm definitely yeah. ready for like streaming version to just fully like take yeah. it. yeah uh for me personally like i remember mixing that and they told me from the jump that they wanted it to be seamless 
And I was like, perfect. I've never done that before, but I'll try my best. <laughs> and so thankfully today I found out that it was, but we actually do that uh, live as well. We do live sucks and then saucy and just go straight into it. And I don't know. I feel like, although it starts off like the EP starts off at kind of like a, uh, like a calm pace and then it ramps up into like one of our, I'd say not heaviest songs, but like most energetic. And it's just so fun to play live. Uh, the first time I played with them was in Denton on our tour. And I kid you not, it was like the biggest rush I've ever had, like playing live and I had a ton of nerves leading up to it, but once we got into that song, it was like easy. It was like I've been playing with them for years. Uh, well, you know, uh, from from your point of view, obviously, like the th- the three of everyone else were part of this EP, like getting it like the bare bones to getting it ready for the studio. So when they brought it to you and you heard this for like the first time, like what really made you want to ask to be a part of it? after like working with them money (laughs) success writing the coattails of their success no um for me i don't know if i've told them this yet but they were the first uh sort of band that i had worked with that i was aiming to work with so tolu you'd say they're like maybe emo midwest emo adjacent more so like scramsy and i love that but I had wanted to work with a band that focused a lot more um, on like melodies and stuff. Not that obviously don't like Tolu stuff, but um, I'd been wanting to work with a band like them for so long. And so when they reached out and sent me their demos, I was like, it's over, like facts cured, you know, we're ready. But um, yeah, just more than that, uh, when they brought it to me, I was just blown away by how talented they were. <laughs> like with what they had i had met zeke like a month before i recorded them because uh he played guitar and sang on the cover that tolu did of shoes by oso so and he i guess you didn't know you were playing guitar that day right yeah so sam texted me <laughs> and he's like do you want to he basically asked if i wanted to help with the it was very vague i don't, I don't know what he said verbatim but it was yeah. very vague on what i was helping with so I showed up, and as soon as he picks me up from the parking lot to go to Trace's place, he's like, oh, you didn't bring your guitar? You can borrow mine. And I was like, I'm playing guitar? <laughs> I didn't know I was playing guitar, so I had to fake. <laughs> this is my first time meeting Trace, recording. I didn't have a part to play. I had to fake it. And, uh, I thought I was singing on it. Um, but apparently it didn't hurt my reputation. At no, because, so. I mean, I think my perspective's like flip he came in and like shredded it without knowing like really how to play it and kind of just being forced into it almost um not forced into it but just like he kind of like it was forced into it (laughs) he was strong yeah but anyways yeah he he comes in and does that and i was like wow this dude's talented i didn't know he was in red sun and then quinn reaches out and i had heard of quinn before because uh he had been talked about at the recording of shoes and they were like, Oh, Quinn's going to love this when we send it to him. And from then on, I'd kind of known him as like a entity, not as like a real person, but just like a, a figment almost. That's how but, I on Twitter thinks of Quinn as well. Like, yeah. It's just and a, I wasn't on Twitter at this entity. point. Yeah. So I had no idea, like, you know, the kind of following he had amassed just by being a good person and involved in his scene. <laughs> anyways yeah he reaches out sends me the demos and i was like cool let's set it up and i come over to the me too thanks crib where we recorded and i yeah. met uh dylan and quinn there for the first time except i didn't know dylan's name was dylan <laughs> bro that's logan, yeah, logan. That's logan. <laughs> bro that's logan so <laughs> lord dump for you um i had just finished recording a band called always last the goats goats they're so, yeah, for real. so fucking talented 18 19 i just finished recording them their front man their name is uh logan and so i had been texting with them and i was going like back and forth between like setting up stuff for dylan and i was like 
I called them Dylan. Or I called them Logan like three times before they corrected me. And when they did, they were like, actually, my name's Dylan. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's like, I'm so fucking sorry. So I kind of got it mixed up. But yeah, they just, uh, they just shredded through five songs in like an hour. And I think it took me like an hour and a half to set up. And so usually that's not how it goes. Like it takes a little bit to get each take, but no, they powered through it and fucking killed it. And so <laughs> from then on, I was like, so who's playing bass on this? And Quinn was like, oh, I am. Comes in and does it in like, so there's five songs totaling about like 25 minutes. Does it in like 30 probably doesn't really take too much time on any any song just kills it i think you said you wrote it like the day before yeah i mean the, none of the bass parts i wrote are as good as trace trace is good with the sauce okay, that's, that's true but yeah if you if you watch the shadow money uh video um it's like there's no bass player it's a three piece and it's two guitars because that's how we wrote everything so. that's how i found out too <laughs> Right after I recorded them, I looked up their live sets. And I was like, hmm, no bass player. That's interesting. <laughs> and I didn't really play guitar or bass or anything like before this band. Like I played it out of necessity because me and my homie Austin, we would write stuff and he's great at guitar and bass, of course. But I wanted to add more than just like being a singer. And so I tried learning how to play bass. And then once I reached out to Quinn and that in them I kind of like had to put my nose to the grindstone and like actually learn how to play my instrument and so I, I think I faked it for about a month there but now I feel comfortable and I, yeah, I, I had no idea I, I just assumed idea. you played bass forever <laughs> yes yeah, same here but yeah so I think Quinn said it earlier like he reached out and was like you have any like uh bands you play in that want to be on shows and I was like um no but y'all need a bass player right and from then on it was sort of history i'd say i mean that definitely works out uh i, I love i love yeah, the yeah. fact that you also watch the video and you're like oh there's no no bass player like this is a yeah i do my research yeah <laughs> um uh one one thing that if everyone's checked out a bunch of episodes they all know that uh one thing that i really enjoy in like emo or emo adjacent like albums is um sound clips there is a sound clip in this ep um i'm i i think i've figured out what what it is and correct me if i'm wrong in any of this as as well but is it a scene from rick and morty where rick is just yelling about the moon for some reason a song uh i think it's in is it not in faker Oh, oh, is it the build up like kind of towards like the because yeah. if so, it's I don't think we have a Rick and Morty sample. Is it a like what was that 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 sample? Yeah, I think so. I... Oh, I gotta talk about this. So, <laughs> one thing about me is I'm a big League of Legends fan, I have been since I was like 14. So it's been like seven going on, maybe like eight years of being a fan of this game. And I watch the pro scene a lot. And so Faker is the most famous player in the history of League of Legends, like hands down. And there's this clip of him from 2013 playing in the OGN Summer Split Finals Game 5, where he does this like crazy outplay. And like, you know, the casters are casting it. And they're like, oh, yo, shit, Faker, what was that? And I was like sitting there and I was like, dude, this is so awesome. To me, this is such a like culturally relevant moment. We got to put this in a song. And so we did. And then like I sent Trace this clip and I was like, hey, do you think you make it work? And Trace is like, nah, fuck that. I got, I'm going to use the original clip. I'm going to get this shit going. And they put it in. I was like, oh, that actually sounds really good. And so I, I think we're really lucky that it worked out as well as it did. But yeah, that, that sound clip is from League of Legends Esports from 2013, which is crazy, a crazy statement to make. <laughs> I was so down for it too because like I I thrive off of like post-production stuff when it comes to producing like if I can add in stuff here and there that like kind of build it up whether it be samples or like I don't know just texture stuff I'm all for it like I'm sure I think Tolu knows this by now and Limp Wizards as well but um, for all of their stuff I added in like an organ sound underneath like 
pretty much every chorus or verse wherever it needed it and it just kind of like brought it to life and i did that for a lot of our stuff too but things like samples like that too like the the scott pilgrim sample and shred flanders by tolu is like one of my favorite things because it, it just lined up so perfectly and that was all sam's idea and i don't know everyone that i've worked with so far has just been like great when it comes to like sampling and like choosing stuff like that uh noah noah from morris village um he's also in tolu they uh they wanted to do a Futurama clip in the beginning of their song Couch Pals, which came out like a week ago. <laughs> and I was just like astounded at like how well uh, all of these people that I've worked with just have like an ear for that kind of thing. And then come back later and they're like, oh, I don't really know how to like re- like produce myself. I'm like, you're doing it right now. <laughs> like you're giving me stuff and you're producing your own music. So, yeah, no, it's it's really cool just working with people like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I'm always amazed because, like, I have also watched like a lot of TV in my life, and it's or like movies or like ref like normal pop culture stuff. I I just lost sound. I think I'm at a phone. Oh, hang on. Wait, I think we have to plug in uh, Quinn's. All right. Headphones. We unplug Quinn. Oh, okay. can you push that one for me? Hello. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Oh, uh, yes, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Right. We love technology. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so like, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of TV, movies, pop culture stuff, and it's it's always mind-blowing to me when fans can hear something and they're like, oh, we're gonna, we got to like remember that sound clip or like use it somewhere. And then they, they throw it in a song and it comes out fucking perfect. I think like one of my favorite ones um, from the past couple of years has been... Uh, uh saint judas for one of their songs they have like a bojack horseman uh sound clip and it just works so fucking well and sets the whole tone for the entire like song um and that's the shit that just gets me giddy as a kid yeah i love that shit uh so you know like i can keep hyping up this ep as much as i want but i think i need to you know ask you this from your your perspectives um obviously if someone is listening to this episode and they haven't listened to red sun yet one what are you doing you should have listened to the cp multiple times but what's at least one song if they have a couple minutes in their day and they need to listen to at least one red sun like song to like kind of get the feel what's the one that they should at least listen to i have an answer to this i feel like Red Sonfo was the first single for a reason. I feel like it really encapsulates all the other songs, what we're trying to put together for the sound. I feel like that's really the peak Red Sun sound. Um, like moving forward, that's what I would say is like the basis of it. I don't know about y'all. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, that totally. or Baker. Uh, Red Sun more so, but, or excuse me, Red Sunfo more so, but Baker 100%. Or, yeah. er, we got you, brother. All right. I'm going to need to take that from you. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's not nothing. Kill their vibe. I, I think we're going to go to the casino after this. Uh, I wish I was joking. Um, I I guess I'd agree with that. Yeah, I'd say, like, if you only have a couple minutes, Red Sunfo, I'm pretty sure it's a minute and 57 seconds long. Really catchy. We repeat choruses, hooks, very easy to get, get along to. I had somebody dm me and say that we sounded like hot mulligan and i was like i don't know if i agree with that but maybe so if you're into like catchy emo like i mean like i call this like fake emo but honestly i'd say we're emo pop where it's like we're kind of in this like genre where it's like we're trying to bridge bridge this gap between uh like traditional emo revival sound and maybe like pop punk or indie pop i think we're doing a great job here on this ep baker what was that is a classic uh, or it's going to be a classic when this comes out i mean it's just such a catchy riff shoutable choruses memorable clip or samples like uh, i think that's good and then like 
if you're not into that kind of like emo sound saucy is basically an anime opening but like in english and written by like people from oklahoma which is like a weird <laughs> statement to make but like i mean it goes it's just this funky kind of tune that's got this kind of descending octave riff that is really reminiscent of like j-pop and i i would say that like genuinely like as somebody who like writes a lot of these songs i would cite j-pop as kind of like an influence in like a lot of our songs like we're doing some kind of interesting things and i think like the choices that we make artistically really make red sun a unique band like i feel like we're a very difficult band to like say oh this red sun song sounds like this just because we're just weird like i mean like we play in a weird tuning um our songs have weird structures like i i compare a lot of our song structures to edm pop it's like sometimes we get rid of a chorus and the you know for a drop almost and you know that drop may just be a riff or you know it might be a chant or something but it's like we're like writing these songs kind of weird and like i think it's like kind of a fresh take on the whole like emo pop thing so uh, i i would definitely not biased advise you to listen to it but i i think it's pretty good personally I love Saucy. I just want to say that it's yeah. probably it's the most fun to play. It's probably your most energetic, hyped song. Uh, I I love it. <laughs> yeah, I would say I... if you're if you're not into traditional emo music and you want to listen to Red Sun, Saucy is the song for sure. One hundred percent. I remember when I first listened to it, I was like, it's it's almost more of like it leans more like a, a pop or like top forty style song than like a normal emo song. So like that's the nice thing about the CP is that there's so much going on to kind of reiterate what you said, Quinn. Where anyone can listen to this album and there's something on it for literally everybody. Um, you know, between like the the poppiness or like just the catchy lyrics, it like no one should be disappointed with anything on this out al- on the CP. So nice. Uh, I will say one one of my favorite songs and. One, uh, yeah, I mean, I already said Faker is my favorite, but uh, I think one of my favorite songs to end off this album is the Ball MCC, um, just because like it has such great like um, courses towards the end where you already feel yourself, and especially like from like my point of view, like I already feel myself like singing along and chanting, and like I can tell the spots where like obviously it's gonna be gang vocals like crazy at like shows and I can already feel that. And I think it's going to be, I think it's a great song to kind of end off this entire EP. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think the way I have it formatted in Dropbox is uh, it's ball MCC, but it's actually ball McCartney is like the full title or okay. what it'll be on like streaming and stuff. I just did that to like shorten it down, but that's actually like, I still agree with them about like what to get into for red sun. Definitely like red sun foe or saucy. Ball McCartney is definitely like that's my favorite. That that's actually okay, my yeah. personal favorite too. Yeah, I love it because uh, whenever Quinn tracked it on bass, I was like, okay, this is this is nice. And so when I went in and dumbed it down for me, um, I was like, okay, this is like the easiest song we play for me, and you know, it's kind of it flows kind of like a regular song almost, like the kind of like pop chord structure, I guess, or the pop structure i guess you'd say and after a while i went back and listened to his old bass tracks whenever i did it or whenever we recorded it and i was like what he plays is like a lot more intricate i should probably try and play that and now it's like the hardest song for me to play live but it's like it's so well written from quinn's point of view and it just makes it like that much easier to play like it, even though it's like my fingers are like cramping by the end of it it's still sorry. like it's it's fulfilling almost to end off uh like an ep and like most of the set with that song um yeah so if you if you've gathered anything from this episode please go listen to best buds by red sun um a million a million times uh before we like start to transition and before i ask my final question to kind of cap off this this section i, I want to give a quick shout out um <laughs> to quinn's mom uh yes absolutely be, the goat, because yeah. i i, I know it's, it, it's very it's it's very rare that i see a parent um one give a shit about like the music that their kids are putting out but take the time like yes i see the facebook posts every once in a while like of, of someone's like mom doing something but like 
I feel like to have a Twitter account takes it a whole step further to also like retweet and like hype up your your child's music and to be so involved. I like literally in my time doing this podcast, I've probably seen it two to three times, and that includes your mom. Um, and I, I appreciate the fuck out of her for doing that and being a part of it. And uh, and more parents should be down with what their kids are making, no matter whether they get it or not. Um, and I know she can't hang this on her fridge, but I, play I it appreciate for everyone that. To hear. Yeah. The, I, uh, so before I gushed about my mom, obviously, I want to say I love my dad. My dad is also a great guy, uh, a role model in my life. Shout out, Doug. But uh, my mom is so cool. Like, honestly, I've, I've just been really lucky. I, I, growing up, you know, I, I was like, my mom gave me an iPod. She had me listening to 80s alternative and like 90s grunge when I was like four or five years old, you know, and that's kind of like what, you know, the basis of music in my life has been. And I've just been really lucky that my mom has always supported me in everything I've ever done. And it's like, for me, it's like, I've always just been like into like maybe non-traditional things. Like I'm a, I did marching band in high school, which is new for my parents because they kind of grew up as cheerleaders or football players. And, you know, like they're like, okay. And I, I also did competitive trivia and like quiz bowl. And I was actually state champion in that. And my mom was like always supportive and she'd always be there for me. And so as I entered this kind of phase of my life where I started to do music, my mom was always there and she's always super kind. And I think especially like an emo, you know, especially when you make these songs or maybe you're talking about things that are not easy subjects to talk about, you know, it can be kind of scary to be like, oh man, you know, my mom's going to hear me, you know, think about, you know, maybe... I don't like how I'm interacting with substances or maybe I don't like how I'm interacting with the people I love. And, you know, my mom listens to that and she's like, man, this is catchy. And then she's like, you know, she's always there for me and she asks if I'm okay. And I appreciate that. And I mean, above everything, it's just like so cool that she's like taking such a liking to this Twitter thing. Like, I mean, like the, the when she found out that like this whole Twitter thing was kind of like a thing that was going on, she's like, oh, I got to be a part of this. Like, <laughs> she was telling me today she's like should i go to this focella thing like would people like it if i was at focella and i was like i don't think you'd have like a lot of fun but i think you think it's cool that like people know who you are and my mom is so awesome like she is just genuinely a wonderful role model definitely my role model in my life um i've grown up my entire life with my mom as my role model i love her um like it, it's just genuinely she's just like one of the most strong and powerful people i've ever met and like you know for like she was posting about our song on facebook today you know i mean like i mean she's a businesswoman and she's posted about her son's emo band like to all our friends and stuff and i'm like man dude you are brave and i i respect that i i love my mom to the moon and back she's the greatest uh i'm a mom as well 100 shout out my mom love my mom yeah we we love quinn's mom we also gotta give a shout out to dylan's grandma Dylan's oh, no, no, some, some red sun lore for y'all. I, uh, you know, I was texting some of my family uh, after we had gotten hit up by Brady. I was like, you know, my band's gonna be put on this label. You know, I'm really excited. So my grandma's asking about it. She's like, oh, send me some of your songs. Uh, I to be to be fair, I didn't mention that. You know, we were kind of keeping it hush hush, and we had announcement plans and stuff. But uh, she went ahead and she. Uh, posted that we were on uh, Thumbs Up Records uh, before we were supposed to announce, and also uh, posted one of the songs that was on a Dropbox link <laughs> on Facebook in the comments, and I'm like, I was like, you know, it's I was like, it's okay, you know, not my grandma, you know, my grandma's older, you know, she's not really, no one on her Facebook is really going to pay that much attention. So it's like, it's okay. But yeah, shout out my grandma. She's very supportive. I, I want to shout out my mom as well. Uh, you know, my parents have always been very supportive of me being in music. And, um, you know, like Quinn said, these are some, these songs are, they have some difficult subjects on them. You know, it's not something that you want your parents to hear. Uh, um, but, you know, my mom, my, both my parents and my grandma, you know, they're very supportive. So, you know, shout out to them. Shout out Dylan's grandma. I, I think that's honestly, Dylan, I got to say, like, to have anyone leak uh, your music, I think it's amazing that it was your grandma that did it. Because uh, no one else could ever say that, hey, my grandma leaked something. And you can be like, no, like, mine actually did. Uh, and that's fucking amazing. Oh, a hundred percent. Um. Also, 
since you know your mom's thinking about going to Focella, this episode does come out before Focella. You have some other cool things happening uh, this year before I get to the whole Focella part. But you, you're playing Nargaritaville, uh, which mm-hmm. this is a the second or third year I think of Nargaritaville. Third, third, yeah, three? third one. Third, yeah, yeah. Uh, which that lineup is sick. I know the homies in Bouquet are playing, and I'm blanking on everyone else that I'm homies with. They're playing. I think a couple of the fellow label mates are also playing right i think yeah garden home and tiny voices are and i just yeah. say the fact that bouquet is playing i was like oh shit bouquet we're getting bouquet in oklahoma oh damn let's go like you know yeah. i was like uh, yeah then, no. dude the, those those are the homies um i've known most of those dudes for quite a long time and i'm i'm stoked to see them hitting uh oklahoma um i think yeah by the time this episode comes out it'll already be announced but uh the fears of bands is doing it's I'm celebrating five years this year, so I'm doing a show in in June, and I have the homies of Bouquet also. I was oh, able to get so them sick. to play that oh, show. Oh, so, yeah, let's fucking awesome. go. Yeah. Congrats, uh, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but then the other cool thing that's happening this year is, you know, to add on to the list of accomplishments that have happened so far in 2024, uh, y'all are playing Focella 7. Um, how does that feel to say? Absolutely insane it it blows my mind every time it, i think about it me personally anyways it's just insane to me i still think we're getting punked i mean <laughs> i for me personally like like i said i didn't come from like diy or emo and so like i've been finding out a lot about a bunch of things in like a short period of time but i knew focella was what focella was like the big thing for a lot of up-and-coming bands and i was like oh that'd be cool to play and then we get the we get the I don't know if there's a DM or what. Yeah, someone was like, "You want to play Pochella?" <laughs> and Quinn told us, and that was like one of like the first week or two yeah. I was in the band. It was like his first week, yeah. He was like, "We're playing Pochella." I was like, "All right, yeah, I'm cool with it." Yeah, I guess I'll just say like I mean like, for me, it just it literally doesn't feel real because it's like you know like. I'm, I feel like I'm known kind of as like this, like kind of, you know, like Twitter personality. It's like, oh, I do shit posts. Oh, I do like cool community stuff sometimes. And um, I'm really grateful for that. But like the fact that like, you know, I get to play these fests that, you know, I spend all this money to go and like travel and be at just because, like, you know, I really like the music or the community. It's just it's just crazy because it's like I remember one of our first rehearsals with Zeke. They just announced the Focella 6 lineup and we were like, we got to get out there. And we just like couldn't. It was like during the school year, and like also everybody's jobs and stuff. And it's like that lineup was so sick. And so, like I mean, like we've been a big fan of Connor forever. And so like we're just chilling. And like I went home for the holidays, and I'm hanging out with my mom on the couch. And I get a text from Connor. It's just like Red Sun X Focella question mark. Like that was it. Like that was the whole message. And I was like. I was like, are you being for real? I was like, do you really want us? Because like, we had no songs at that time. And it was like, <laughs> this guy had probably never heard anything besides maybe like a rough mix of something with no vocals. And he's like, yeah, sure. Why the fuck not? Who knows? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm so stoked for it. It's going to be so awesome. Or I hope it's awesome, at least. And uh, like, it just gen- like, like Dylan said, it doesn't feel real. It's like the more I think about it, I'm like, you know, it's like you look at like the we're bands fucked. we're playing with, like on our we're day at Coachella, and it's like I'm playing a show with Heart Attack Man. Like I, I right. remember being like a kid and listening to Heart Attack Man in high school and be like, oh, this is a cool band. And it's like it just doesn't feel real, you know. There's a lot of homies on that lineup, so I'm extremely excited because it's very rare that an Oklahoma band even gets to leave takes the time to leave Oklahoma. So um yeah it'll be really exciting yeah it, the, the the lineup stacked um which shout out to uh you know connor and, and his uh and their whole team for the countless years because i feel like i looked at like kind of like what you mentioned we we saw phil Chalice six's lineup and we we're like okay this is this is stacked like there's no way that this can be topped and then Focella 7 comes out and I know one big thing that they're doing for Focella 7 is a lot of the bands that have never played Focella got asked to come through and you're just like holy shit like there is still this many bands that have never played Focella or been a part of it and so like this lineup's even stacked so now I'm just like I'm not going to be there for it again one of these years I need to make it Focella but 
I'm already like anticipating what the Focella eight lineup could even be after these past two years. It's insane. So you're gonna be there, right? Not this year. Not this year. No. Uh, so okay, okay. okay. I, I would I would love to be there for Focella seven. Uh, I have a family thing that same day on the fifteenth, so I won't be able to no make worries, it man. to this one. So hopefully Focella eight will be the year that you finally see Beers with Bands at Focella. Where are you from again? Uh, I'm in Minneapolis. Minneapolis, okay. Yeah, I think... Was it announced by the court? No. Okay, I was going to say. There will be a... Actually, I can't really say a lot of things, but like, we might be... Yeah, there might be some road trips. Uh, We can talk about There might be some road trips. Yeah, Yeah, there might be some road trips. Oh, yeah, we can talk about it later. Yeah. 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 Um, But yeah, so I'm, I'm so happy to have seen... To like, when I saw y'all on that uh flyer um you know and and crash twitter or not twitter but instagram um it was nice to see red sun be included in that and i'm so happy for y'all um make sure you collect your cards i know a lot of people have already been talking about like trying to get quinn's (laughs) card but make sure you guys hang on to those cards yourselves uh so you know like uh we kind of talked the ep we talked some lore about red sun uh, we talked about Quinn's mom. We talked about uh, Nargaritaville. We talked about Dylan's grandma and mom, and we talked about Focella. Uh, is there anything that I might have missed between Red Sun, the new EP, um, that you want the people to know about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. No, this has been like great first interview. This is the first interview for Red Sun. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. yeah. It is a... You covered all the bases. Honestly, it's it's been a really great experience. Oh, yeah. I appreciate oh, I that. Can't... Yeah, I can't think of anything. I guess I guess at the end of the day, if one thing I could say, I mean, we we say it kind of a little bit as our tagline, but uh, our tag our, our tagline is kind of you know hang out with your friends while you still can, and at the end of the day, that's what Red Sun is all about. Like I said, you know, we're all you know just. A, really good friends uh it's not just about the music and the way that i see the band personally it's like uh yeah we play music together but you know i just love hanging out with my friends and doing cool stuff together and that's really what red sun is all about um and especially you know putting together the cp that was a big thing for us but that's all i got (laughs) no yeah it's definitely like friendship for for sure like Mm -hmm. When you want something like this to be successful, there's obviously like a level of uh, professional professionalism, I guess you'd have to maintain. Um, but at the end of the day, like Dylan said, putting your friendship above that is like more important. And I think we all strive to make that a priority. Like I live in Tulsa, which is like an hour and a half from where they are. And, you know, they're always still asking to like hang out and like, even when we meet up to do stuff for uh, music, it's always like, you know, what can we do before or after just to go chill or like grab a bite to eat or gamble. But yeah, no, it's definitely like friendship between all of us is like a huge priority for sure. I mean, I, like I said at the, towards the beginning of this episode, that's what you want at the end of the day. You want to be having fun with your best friends yeah. and just, 100% cranking out tunes uh not feel like it's work like yeah you could drive in an hour and a half and just be like okay yeah we're just gonna rehearse and then you just you gotta fucking go like we don't want to we're here just to do this but no y'all take the time to actually hang out and like feel like as one cohesive unit which is amazing i feel like it really reflects through and i'm really stoked to see um what the next uh releases are gonna look like uh, now that Trace is like kind of in it and like we'll be doing those parts. Um, so I'm really stoked to, to see what you bring to those recordings besides the production aspect of it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess uh, th- if it's kind of like an ending statement for the whole thing, the, the EP is good. It's definitely not our last release this year. I think we've got we have a weird amount of songs kind of ready. So if you went through our band chat and looked at the links, it's just like audio <laughs> underscore seven, eight, seven, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn Wilcox. Cause dude is always fucking writing. I, I, oh, yeah. I will say some of these new songs are 
fight are heartbreaking. Like, I mean, I'm literally writing these so that way you are like crying, lying in your bed, thinking about the tragedy that is existence. So um, I hope I hope people are ready for a, a very stark dynamic, uh, like, you know, like a contrast in the sounds between EPs. But it's going to uh, be yeah, a good luck. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm stoked uh, to cry along and finger point while I do it. Um, you know, everyone, like like we've said, everyone goes into Best Buds. Um, uh, oh, oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah. Wait, can you can you add in here, like, at the very end? Like, I don't know how you splice it, but Camquat underscore on Instagram is my goat. We love Cam. Cam is the best photographer ever. They did all the Red Sun media pics. We love Cam. Um, Absolutely amazing. They're, they're well, sir, just well, the well, most talented photographer I know. And they're one of the youngest and most upcoming stars in Oklahoma. Like, genuinely pay attention to Cam. We love them so much. They've literally done, like, all of our photos. They've been literally all literally every yeah. fucking Cam, time. Cam has been to so many Me Too Things shows where we've played to yeah. just Cam because no one else shows up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, as we start to transition to the later parts of these episodes, uh, like, I know, like, obviously, this is Beers with Bands. Uh, you don't have to be drinking on these episodes because I would definitely do that for you. But I know y'all have some fine beverages in front of you on this nice Saturday night. What are y'all drinking? So let's see. I've got I've got myself a Miller Lite. I got the, I got the high life. The high life. Water. Miller Lite. <laughs> so you'd you'd clearly say that Red Sun is a Miller high life or miller light band in general i i think just because of the one lyric and uh <laughs> in faker and faker yeah definitely but i i, I kind of realized this after the fact of writing that that i was like yo shit it's like if we're on stage i'm drinking a different beer it's probably easy to plug in the beer name like where that lyric is so yeah that could be so you know you know i've i've gone to quinn to bars a lot oh together and uh <laughs> Never get the Miller uh, Miller Light. It's always two Michelobes. Two Michelobes. I'm double fisted. I double fist. Uh, yeah, I gotta say that that is one of the, like, I think one of my favorite lines out of that entire song, uh, just because it's so catchy. And then also, you know, as a dude that just drinks, used to drink heavier, heavier than now, like. It it resonated very well, uh, but yeah, it's it's a great fucking line. Um, on on this end, uh, I might have you might have seen it at the beginning. I started the episode with a good old Colt forty five. Uh, can't go wrong with those. Um, if you've never had a Colt forty five, definitely go try it. Uh, the, you know they're doing cool things over. They're like new. Um, and then for the rest of the episodes, you know I had some good old hams and modelos. Uh, Surprisingly, the, they pair. Modelo, Modelo is my personal favorite. Yeah, I will say, yeah, I'm rocking with Modelo. Oh Modelo. man, yeah. we saw your story before we got on, and I showed them, and they were all like, "Yeah." yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no dish on Yangling, but Modelo on top. I think. Yeah, Modelo my dude. Yeah. We were time. we were at some like oh that rock. That we we like went to like. Best, a, part of my year so far. we went to a mexican food restaurant like last week in our indian cities and we were like oh dude it's like four dollar modelos let's get them and they bring them out in like the large ass margarita uh, glasses it's, it's like frozen like, with the lime on yeah it. it's got the salt and lime i was like oh man this is this is the best day of my life <laughs> uh but yeah like the only reason i had like all these beers uh and post about it was just because i mean at this point y'all are the fourth uh oklahoma band that i've had on and I think the last band that I had on from Oklahoma was uh, was Limp Wizards dudes. And obviously, you know, those dudes can put back some beers. Uh, so I was like, I don't know what to expect. I was underwhelmed the last time. I didn't have enough on deck. So just grabbed more just in case. I didn't know how this was going to go. <laughs> uh, especially with that line of, uh, you know, uh, after 15 Miller Lights. Uh, but no, this has, been, this has been a great time. And I'm super stoked to have red sun on um obviously we're in the later half of this episode which i know we've talked a lot of stuff and everyone that's still listening thank you for still tuning in uh this is where we kind of talk about some fun stories from your time in music whether they're shows tours time recording um you know basically they can be the tour stories time and time 
in music stories, as I normally say, they can be anything horrendous to tremendous or any adjective in between. Uh, think about the stories you usually reminisce about with your friends. Those are usually the best stories that everyone loves to hear. I have a great, I have a good story for this. And then I'll let everybody else go because I'm sure we do. But we, we've done one tour so far as of making this. Not that we're doing more. But uh, we uh, we did the little run for the split. And we were in Missouri at Springfield. And so if you don't know anything about Missouri, is it is a state where you can drink in the car. It's, a open, <laughs> it's an open container state. You can, like, be doing absolutely diabolical things. And so Dylan and I... We got some seltzer, like tall boys from the uh, Walmart, and like you know, we we won't put the venue. It's at a bar. They're giving us half price drinks, so you're you know starting off kind of crazy. And after our set, we like go outside, and it's like snowing, and it's just Dylan and I outside, like drinking tall boys, and we're just like talking about life and stuff. And we're like, yo, it's like crazy, you know. We were like, like we're doing this music thing, you know. Like I I can't believe we're doing it, and. uh I got a little out of hand and uh so the show ends and everything and we're like shocketing beers in the car and like we pull up to a mcdonald's and i i accidentally <laughs> ordered like 20 cookies or something <laughs> like on the self-help thing and like we sit down and i'm looking at the wall and I, I turned to trace and i think i said something basically along the lines of oh i'm not normal drunk right now and like, <laughs> you know, I was like and like oh it was it was bad and so you know i ate like 10 cookies or something and then we drove back to oklahoma that night and it was snowing and there was like semis drifting and stuff yeah. like genuinely <laughs> fever dream of experience two things there i missed all of that because uh shout out bryden from the others like us because i forgot my credit card <laughs> at the venue because it was a bar and b drove me back to get my car while that was happening and then second thing <laughs> Shout out to Alistair, because no one else touched the wheel that whole entire time. <laughs> the whole Alistair, and for so some reason, it started to blizzard at 2 a.m. while we were coming home. Oh. It is like everyone was sleeping in the back, and me and Alistair were up front trying not to die in this world <laughs> war. It was like the one time it decided to snow. Uh, I will say, uh, Missouri has beat me. Tw like, I've never survived su Missouri. Both times we toured to Missouri, uh, mainly because I was the guy in the back of the van where as soon as we crossed straight lines, you just heard, sk, sk, uh, <laughs> you know, like the, cool. the main time, like we were playing our friends, like dad's like garage. It was like a garage, like a mini fest. We crossed the state lines at one. We didn't play till nine. Uh, it, I was hammered, uh, <laughs> like hammered. Like that's why Faker resonates uh basically is what i'm saying um there was a there was a point where i was trying to get in the van through the back and i was trying to shut the door and the door wouldn't shut and i was like dude the door won't shut and it was because my legs were still hanging out the back of the van um, <laughs> oh man like, i was i was that gone um fine hour yeah it, it was it was brutal i haven't been back to missouri since um but yeah uh missouri's rough <laughs> What was the other story we said? We talked about rain sounds. Oh, my oh fucking God. Man. So, <laughs> here we go. So, Hold on. Before you get into this, <laughs> you, you can go ahead and tell it. I'm going to run upstairs and use the bathroom. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. We okay. did that while we were having technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about doing that, too, and I just didn't want to come back. And, like, you all come back and me just not be here, but I'll be right back. No, you're good. You're good. All right. Should we wait or should we tell it? I want to see his reaction. Yeah, I want to. I think he's good. Yeah. I think it's. Oh, dang it. This is kind of some beef on Red Sun. Um, uh, some beef. blood merch. Oh. Who's we don't have a name for it. Who's beefy with it? Hey, I love, hey, I love you. you. Hey, I fucking need you. Hey, cut that. Cut that. Wait, cut, that. <laughs> cut that out, Michael. Cut that out. <laughs> I, uh, I love Hey, I love you. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, no, speak for yourself. Dude, oh, I think like, Hey I Love You is the first fifth wave emo band I ever listened to. Like I Yeah, like I think I remember like I was in school and it was like uh I was in like a class and I was on my phone googling what is fifth wave emo 
and like, right now at 26. And it was right when uh, Kit, like that Hey I Love You EP came out, and then also right when uh, oh, man, that like Asian Glow record girl. came out. Oh, the yeah, the fish one. And like, I was like, oh, damn, bro, these guys kind of like, they kind of cook it. And like, that was kind of like how I got into emo. And then like, oh, damn. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. If anything, that's actually how I got into Oso. So like, that same day, I discovered the Oso, Oso, Oso thing. And I was like, yo, this goes hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. I don't know if he's going to keep that in there, but... I still don't really know, like, what bands are in which way. <laughs> oh, it's like... I mean, it's pretty cutter, kind of, like, depending on your like, time line and... Oh, shit. Oh, God. I got something new. I gotta we say, didn't tell I you. Her, yeah. Don't worry. I didn't hear a single thing. Uh, I got to say, when I tweeted that I was having you on, I was low-key hoping that, like, Hey, I Love You was going to, like, tweet, and, like... Just like their no beef to ask to ask something, um, but I I still don't think uh, they might have liked it. I don't know if they like responded to it. Yeah, I don't think Caleb has uh, instigated anything yet. But I, I we can go into a story about that after this the white knuckling story because that's that is <laughs> truly a that's truly a classic. So like, I'm trying to think, was it the total so? The others like us were filming a music video and Zeke played on the song. So he was there and I recorded it and I had edited it and everything. And we show up to record the music video. They got some beers and I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not driving. I'll have a couple beers or whatever. And so like, you know, I was like slamming beers. I mean, I'm basically getting free, free beer from Noah. Shout out Noah. And uh, free Bud Light. Free, but yeah, free, good. free Bud Light. And I was recording this video and shit. And so like, we in the car it's like late we have to drive like two hours back to okc and then i have to drive from okc to my house or like you know stay at zeke's or whatever and i go to bed like in the car like i doze off and i wake up and it's playing rain sound ambiance and zeke <laughs> is gripping the wheel at like 10 and 2 like white knuckling like and i'm like i look at him and the first words that come out of my mouth after waking up are we're gonna fucking die. <laughs> and like, like I genuinely like said it with the most like scared expression I could. Like I was like genuinely like, we are going to die. This guy's gonna fall asleep and we're gonna die. I he... locked in. No, that's what, <laughs> he, that's what he said. He turns to me, he goes, Don't worry, I'm locked in. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You locked in? It's like 2 a.m. It's like it's it's the a.m. You're driving to white noise. <laughs> But no, he did that shit. He did that shit. We're no, we made it home. home. They did make it home. Yeah. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> he commented. No comment. Oh, shit. We made it. Yeah. That, that's all that matters. Fun little other story about sleep deprivation. I don't know if we're qualified, <laughs> but... Uh, so... Oh, do you? Okay, we're going... So... Yeah, so we went from on our tour. We went from Denton to Wichita and ended up in Springfield. And so in Wichita, we stayed at an Airbnb, and just with the way it played out, uh, there wasn't like enough beds for everyone to sleep in. And so me and Quinn ended up sleeping. It was me, Quinn, and Dylan slept on in the living room, and uh, I slept on the futon. Quinn was on the floor, and then Dylan was on the floor, and Quinn, I guess, I don't know, I won't speak for him, but he prefers a bed, as <laughs> most people do, and just couldn't really fall asleep. He, didn't, he only had a top sheet. There was no oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they only gave me the top sheet, and they yeah. gave Dylan a sleeping bag, that's so I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, I got fucked on that. I, was snuggled I spent nine hours on TikTok. I want you to think about that. <laughs> nine hours hours not and ooh, everybody else gets up and they're like oh man it's so hot upstairs after i like literally it was like under 60 degrees in this living yeah. room i have a top sheet like i had my shoes on i was under this top sheet and i like with a hoodie and i was shivering because i was that cold I, like i like genuinely couldn't have slept if i tried and so the best part about this is that story i told about dylan and i drinking all those beers I didn't sleep before that. We we immediately got in the car, drove, and I just popped out of the show. And the first instinct of the show was like, oh, we have half price drinks, blah, blah, blah. So I, like, I had like an hour of sleep, and I was sipping like Long Islands 
and uh, that show was the best show i think we've played in my opinion or one of the best shows like like the, for sure. energy was crazy but like i i was probably like on like autopilot like on ways we've never seen before i was like thoroughly impressed because throughout the night i kept like get, getting this reoccurring thought that oh yeah my front man has 30 minutes of sleep right now <laughs> not only not only 30 minutes of sleep but seven hours on tiktok yeah, that's that's just that's 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 oh, so yeah oh, I'm, I'm laying on the futon like talk shoe and i wake up and my eyes just open and quinn is sitting in the corner it's a dark room he's sitting in the corner i think you i feel like i don't know if it was me hallucinating but it looked like you had a top sheet over you <laughs> and the phone in front of you scrolling it scared the fuck locked out of me it. so i went back to sleep <laughs> yeah. locked it. bro was locked in and so yeah i just kept like thinking yes i feel like i should watch him like make sure he doesn't pass out or something no, no he was good he was fine and as soon as we loaded out and got in the van and left and went to mcdonald's as soon as we finished up there i turned around we get in the van he has his hoodie on it's like his drawstrings pulled <laughs> he just knocked the fuck out let the oh whole God. way home it was insane yeah. i was so proud of you the best part about this story is it's like Sam, who is the one who rented this Airbnb, comes downstairs at like 6 a.m. Or, or like whatever it is. He's like, oh, hey, bud, how did how'd you sleep? And I'm like, I didn't. And I just gave him this look where it's like this. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he was like, oh, okay, well, cool. Awesome. And they just kept talking about how warm it was upstairs, even though it was like 20 degrees colder downstairs. And I... It was hot as hell. I wish I had less blankets. Uh, me and Dylan, I don't, I don't know. I feel like we were cool. I was in the sleeping bag. I was snug as I was good. Now, that, that's what, that's was my good. villain origin story. <laughs> Dude, I remember one time we were, we stayed at this these people's house in, in Georgia, and they had recorded, like, the first EP of the band that I was with. Um, so, like, we got the hookup to stay there, and we stayed in, like, their where they have band stay when they come through to record. So it's like a whole studio, a little living room, and like a few bunk beds in the in the side room. I was one of the drivers for the van. Like it was me and one other guy that would drive every day for the tour. And I was supposed to get one of the beds. And before I could even like walk in that room, somehow the bass player from our band uh, got in there and like took the bed that I was supposed to. So I was like, uh, okay, I guess I'll go fuck myself. Um, and I ended up sleeping like in there like, guest kitchen area and it was just straight like concrete floors like you would see at like oh, menards man. or like home depot and i was like this fucking blows uh and that was probably like one of the worst spots i've ever slept on tour i don't know i feel like i mean too you're a trooper for that i would have been like yeah. ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh i i i was so close yeah, 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 yeah. i don't know i mean yeah that definitely like the floor is not the easiest place but that's why i was like i don't know i was fighting quinn on like it was like the opposite of who gets the futon it was like i don't want to have the futon i want you to have the futon mm -hmm. and so eventually bro was like no i'm, I'm getting on the floor now because i like i feel like i'm i was kind of used to it just hanging out with friends when i was younger like just staying at their place sleeping on the floor mm -hmm. and i feel like i just need a pillow and i'm cool but no nah, i just feel even worse now no <laughs> I, I think I've caught up on sleep eventually since that day, but uh, sure hope so. Yeah, I was worried. Nah, that that was that was devious, and like I, all I remember from that day, like following, is we went to the Bass Pro that has like it's their national headquarters, and so it has like a museum that has like every gun that has ever existed, <laughs> basically. Oh my. Oh, yeah it was genuinely crazy, and then we we showed up to the show, and I just remember like in the live set being like, guys, I've had. A couple of beers in Long Islands, and I had one hour of sleep. Also, I'm from Oklahoma. Like, I think that was like <laughs> basically what I said, like three, two or three times. <laughs> but, ah, oh, uh, great, great tour, great, great, yeah. great three, four day tour. I, uh, we went to an Applebee's and uh, got drinks, and I impulsively bought a guitar there. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just off the wall. And, uh, uh yeah we were on uh, so we, we went to guitar center beforehand and 
basically I was like, man, I don't want to buy anything here. I just want this one specific guitar. And so I went on reverb and they had this specific guitar for like half the price listed. And I was like, I can't pass up on this. So like, Oh, he got it on him. I got it. I got the shit on me. It's my, uh, it's my reverend. Sponsor us reverend. Yeah. Sponsor, sponsor us reverend. We love you. Give me a bass. And like, literally, like I was like, okay, fine. I'm taking out a personal loan on this shit. And I just, I mean, I just gave them all my money immediately. I was like, okay, whatever. And, uh, Great purchase. Reverend is on top. Yeah, it seems to be like everyone's switching to Reverend uh, as of late, I feel like. I get it. It's amazing. Yeah, like, I'm not like a luthier by any means, but yeah. every time I pick up Quinn's guitar, it's like everything's just feels right. I don't know. That sounds so corny. It's just like the action's great. Um, it plays really smoothly. And like, for me, I, I always played like maple fretboards. And I think most of the ones i think both years is rosewood right yeah yeah and i'm just not used to it but it plays so smoothly and i was just surprised so i want to i want to reference bass i think for the same price it's like it's like in the same way you can trust a six to seven hundred dollar fender you can trust a six to seven hundred dollar reverend in the same exact way yeah. if not better yeah for sure. uh, yeah i think reverend's better in that price range for sure Um, before I start to leave this out, does anyone have any other stories they want to tell? I don't think so. We're still, we, we haven't toured a lot or played too many yeah. crazy shows, so, you know, nothing yet, but. I'll think of that here, but just in case there's, like, some crazy ass story that, like. Maybe, like, walk over and think it's so traumatic. We can always save it for when LP1 drops and y'all come back on. We'll, oh, yeah, we'll, sure we'll be really back on if you have us, for yeah. sure. Oh, awesome. oh, of course. Yeah, we promise next time to charge the uh, laptop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll blow up and get, like, this whole setup. We'll be living in Beverly Hills at this point. So Yeah, yeah, like, don't, don't, worry, about don't even worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know we, we talked some fun stories. Uh, let your members, props to you, Trace, for, like, offering to to make Quinn sleep on the futon. Um, but like, you know, we talked, we talked to EP, we talked lore. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, I've had Red Sun on and also, you know, it's a little internal like checklist. Uh, it's always, it's always fun to me where um, I end up being bands like first like interview or podcast. Uh, there's so many bands that have been on that have said that i'm always just so surprised um obviously you know red sun's been a band for almost a year uh fully doing like releasing stuff for only like six months um so it's a little bit different but it, it's still humbling to me that y'all trusted me to to yeah. be the first one and i really appreciate that um to to fully end off these episodes i always like to leave off on like a really high note so my last question to each one of you is in your time in Red Sun, what has been your favorite moment that you've experienced so far? Sure. I got, okay, don't want me to start. I guess we'll just go like kind of like right to left here. Uh, let's see, for me, I think my favorite moment is probably we did a new year's party i would say super bowl but dylan couldn't go because they have a job or whatever but uh we had like this like new year's party and like you know like leading up to it like my like friends that you know don't do music have it can been kind of like flaky about like you know the events surrounding it or if we were gonna do anything and um basically you know like bry and danny uh had reached out and were like hey we're doing this party you should show up and so it's like, you know, I was like, you know what, I'll commit to my music friends instead of like, you know, my college friends and let's see how it goes. And I was like, it was literally so fun. Like, I mean, it's just like all four of us hanging out. I mean, just like everybody, you know, but Trace, like sharing drinks and like just hanging out and like even Trace, like just being there. It's just like, it's just so fun because it's like, you know, like, like, I mean, everybody said like at the end of the day, like we're all just like really good friends. And so it's like, we have like all these cool photos and stuff, even including the one that's like on the album cover where it's just like, or, I mean, the EP cover was just, like, from that night where it's just, like, it's just us there. I mean, it's, like, more or less, like, I mean, that was Red Sun hanging out, having fun. You know, our partners were there. I mean, like, we were just enjoying being around each other. And, like, 
I think it was like the first time that I was like, damn, you know, like these these guys are like really like my like best friends. So I love them greatly. Red Sun forever, or at least until I I die. Blast! What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with like uh, my musical goals plus my personal goals. Um, so I I'm so stoked to play Coachella, but at the same time, we're also playing Margaritaville in May. And uh, for me, that's uh, that's a really huge accomplishment because. Uh, I went to Nargaritaville too, and that was the first time I had seen uh, Limp Wizards live, and uh, I think it might have been the first time I'd seen Tolu live, maybe, but that was huge for me because I felt a ton of pride um, seeing people that I had worked with do what they love, and then to find out that I'm able to play the same festival with the same bands, including the one I'm in now, uh, who are also my best friends. It's, it was overwhelming whenever I found out, like, I know everyone else was stoked to be a part of it. But for me, I kind of just had like a, a silent little cry to myself because it was just great to be a part of something that means so much to me and then be able to showcase that to everyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I pretty much have the same thing to say. Like, I came from, like, Me, me Too Thanks had been a band since, like, or has been a band, it still exists, uh, since 2018. And so we've been playing shows for forever. And the first time I met Quinn was when we played with Ben Quad. Um, and, like, I, I felt like we were still doing okay, but, like, when I got the opportunity to play with Red Sun, it was it was the first time like Me Too Thanks was very scared to add more people just because it's like some people just aren't truly committed to something because they love it. And uh playing with Red Sun, going on tour with Tolu, both of these bands, um uh we finally get to play out of state and it's all because like everyone loves this music stuff just for doing it. And like, we're all kind of in the same boat. We're like wanting, this is our passion. This is our life. Um, And it's like, everyone's on the same page. It's like, everyone is on the same page. Like we're, this is like what we do to to feel fulfilled. Um, And just being able to find a group of people who feel the same way and value your passion the same way you do. Uh, Whereas if you meet someone at a nine to five, they're not gonna value that in the same way. Um, I think it's just so, uh, it's been a 180 for my life. Like, I think it's really, you can commit to something like this just because you love it. And I I feel like we have 10 people in nowhere, Oklahoma, like doing that right now. So, yeah, for sure. I'm going to have to uh, agree with Zeke on that. Uh, I mean, I have so many just amazing memories with these people. Uh, These people are not just my friends, but, you know, my family, and, you know, I love them so much, and it's just having people that are as committed to to this as, as you are is just an amazing feeling, and um, <clears throat> I, it's just, it's just awesome, I mean, and especially with this project with Best Buds, um, I think, I guess, if I had to boil it down to one memory, I think it's just been really the past few days putting out this song. Just We've only released the first single, but Red Sun Foe. The response has been amazing, and it just, uh, you know, like I said it the other day, um, I'm, you know, I'm here, and I think all of us are here, like Zeke said. You know, it's just because we love playing music, and we just love playing together as friends. Um, so seeing people resonate, you know, with what we put out and the stuff that we do, uh, you know, it just means so much to to me personally, at least. Um, yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, Red Sun is like I said, hang out with your friends like you still can, and that's what we're all about. So being able to do that and uh, you know see a good response to that is just an amazing feeling. Yeah, uh, it, it's been amazing seeing the responses uh, from like my point of view um, over the last day, just from the first single off the CP, and I'm. 
I know when the Seppsico comes out, like the EP is already going to be out for a couple weeks and everyone's going to love it. But at this point in time, I hope everyone loves it and enjoys it as much as I loved it and as much as you have collectively loved putting it together and, and getting this ready for the public. Um, I'm, I'm ready to see what's next and what's like in the wheelhouse for for future Red Sun. Um, like, I'm, I'm, this is for real, like one of the bands I'm very stoked to see what the next few years looks like. Um, if anyone's looking for merch, music, or Red Sun in general, where can they find it? Link tree. Uh, <laughs> wait. Link tr.ee <laughs> slash Red Sun 405. That has merch. Just look uh, at the Spotify, Spotify Apple yeah. Music. Spotify, Apple Music. What's the app? What's, what's the our website? Band camp? What's our website? The the website for merch, when we have it, is going to be redsunok.com. To clarify, we do have merch. We do have merch. <laughs> we do have merch. <laughs> as, as it's coming out, it should be, it, it will be oh, live. Yeah, yeah. We'll, have, we'll have a hat. If you've ever seen the hat, the Red Sun hat, yeah. uh, we have this cool t shirt design that we did with uh, the person who did the uh, art for the Ben Quad and Arms Lake merch on their last runs. And I think it turned out really well. I'm super excited to put it out. And uh, we'll have tapes that will be for pre-order or just for order at that point. And yeah. then, um, you know, we might have vinyl. Who knows? Like, I guess you'll find I out. That'd be, super, <laughs> sick. That'd be super sick. And it, it's definitely one that I need to add to my collection and everyone else should be adding to their collections as well. Um, listen to Bed, Best Buds over and over again. I can't stress how much I love it um, and how much everyone needs to listen to it. Uh, before we fully take off, Zeke, I know you're in Me Too Thanks. What, what's what's coming next? What's on the horizon for Me Too Thanks? <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah. No. Nothing. We're done. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and Alistair have been roommates for seven years, um, and we're still writing music, and we literally just started demoing another EP today, right before this. Uh, so uh hopefully that comes out <laughs> and then we we might be going uh we might be going places in the united states as well eventually yeah keep your eyes peeled and then have, yeah. uh you know yeah. trace let's let's say uh some bands in uh this oklahoma area are looking to get some production work done uh how can they reach out to you uh dm trace c brown on instagram or Daddy Laflame with a Z <laughs> on Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, now X. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just if you can find me on uh, social media, just shoot me a DM. You know, like I'm in the fortunate position. Um, I'm very privileged to be able to have like uh, a stable income from uh, an act like a regular job and. Right. <laughs> oh, an actual, yeah but yeah an actual job uh but i'm able to do producing sort of as like a side gig um so yeah uh i don't try to make it too like corporate so just hit me up and i'm always down to work with like within a budget um you know whatever you need let's make it happen i'm down for it let's make music uh, and any last words to uh those that other infamous band uh, that y'all are beefing with, uh, Hey, I Love You. Who? Yeah, no, exactly. Right. Listen, here. exactly. No, right. Listen, June 13th, it's going down. I'll fucking see you there, Caleb. <laughs> uh, and if anyone didn't remember that date, that's at Focello 7. Make sure you get their, your tickets. Uh, I know it's already selling quick for two-day passes. Connor, I need uh, paid for this plug, but uh actually don't worry about it just we'll figure it out go to seven, Bunchella seven. yeah i'll send i'll send him i'll send him an invoice uh be ready for that battle to go down uh one last big thank you to red sun for stopping by and being a part of an episode i truly appreciate it best buds is gonna break the internet when it drops everyone listen to red sun listen to best buds be ready for everything coming next and uh this one's for brady see ya yeah, brady. let's go brad Hey, we love Michael, we love Beers for Bands. Wait.
Okay. <laughs> we are Red Sun, and you're watching Beers with Vance. Beers with Vance.